this is the main setup screen of the software the first option is customer info this option if you want to turn it on click yes in here um, it will help you collect customer info with every sale that is very useful for when you want to do your own marketing in your own business or if you want to do your own analytics just figure out which ones are your best customers and so on um, the next one is customer notifications this one is specifically to notify you of a customer's upcoming birthday that is if you're collecting customer info and for some customers you've collected the birth date you have the option to have the software notify you for the upcoming birthday of a customer you just simply put a check mark into this box and designate the number of days that you want to be notified in advance and this may be useful in some of your marketing endeavors in your business the next option is picture logo if you uh, insert a picture with your logo in here uh, the software will basically display that onto the main sales screen all the time and uh, it will also print it out on your receipts so a logo will be printed on the receipts and on the main sales screen uh, you can do this by entering the exact path location and the file uh, where this logo can be found or the preferred way so you avoid any errors or mistypings is to click the browse button browse, browse through the folder to the exact location point at the file and everything will be filled out automatically for you the next option is networking now if you're not going to network uh, you definitely want to leave this alone and leave it at the default uh, if you're just going to use um, just one computer the default uh, value just points to the local hard drive the folder that the software was installed on in our case POS and the uh, file of course the database file PM as in POSmate.db3 that will always be the name of the of the database file regardless if you're networking or not the software just needs to know where to find the, the database file from what location if you're networking of course you need to build your own network the computers need to be networked and uh, on one of the computers that you decide to designate as a server let's say you're gonna share the data of course from that onto the other ones uh, you will create a shared folder on your windows and with your networking windows networking options and once you set this shared folder up all you need to do is you need to copy the database file from one of these machines from the local folder into that shared folder on the server so that that server has a shared location with the database file on it ready to share to the other computers in the network and then you go to all of the computers in the network and actually type in the correct location of how they're gonna access that database on that shared folder in the network or of course the preferred ways to browse point to whatever through your network through your home group point to the server computer its shared folder and the database file the next um, option is invoice numbering this one allows you to specify what number to start from for the next invoice um, let's say right now we're starting the default uh, with the default option which is number one because we're running the software for the very first time but let's say you've already had a business uh, and you've been running your business before you've acquired our software or you just don't want to start at number one and you want to start at a later number what you'll do is you just overwrite that number input the number you want to start from and automatically from the next invoice your invoice number is whatever you entered here and of course that will just continue incrementing with every consecutive invoice the next option is backup this is useful for creating a backup file of the entire data every time you exit the software we have a de default option in here selected simply as your C drive your local drive and the root folder of it but of course if you know what you're doing it's highly recommended to actually designate a folder also in here and have these back backed up databases neatly stored in the folder maybe you can name the folder backup or something like that 
um, it doesn't matter there's no restrictions on that of course if you don't know what you're doing just leave this as it is and you will have backups created into your root uh, destination of your C drive and of course like always browsing is recommended so you avoid mistyping if you set a different location in here it could be an external drive you know external USB thumb drives highly recommended because it will be detached from the PC in case something happens to that PC it's a more secure way of doing backups next uh, option in here is autocomplete uh, autocomplete self-explanatory once you start typing it will actually autocomplete suggest how you should uh, finish what you've started typing and it saves you time uh, if you wanna go along with it um, for example you start typing an item ID on the cell screen to sell something uh, the software will search through the inventory of all the item IDs you have and if something matches what you started typing it will just suggest how to complete it and um, it's interesting to point out though that um, if you're using a barcode scanner of course you don't need help in auto completing because the barcode just the barcode scanner scans the entire barcode and it's going to enter the entire item ID all at once and uh, furthermore if you actually turn this option off when you're using a barcode scanner if you have a barcode scanner in your business it will actually increase the speed and improve the performance of the barcode scanner so it's recommended that you don't use this option if you have a barcode scanner in the business but if you don't definitely do now uh, the last option in here is caller ID this is very useful uh, if you have a landline with a caller ID feature and you have a modem on your PC which is a way to connect the landline to the PC uh, what the software can do for you is as the line rings somebody's calling you uh, it, the software reads directly from your uh, caller ID feature the information of the caller and it pulls up the customer records feature of our software and if it's an existing customer if it matches the name and the phone number it will just open up their existing records so as you're picking up the, the telephone you already have the existing customers record right in front of you as you're talking to them without you having to initiate anything without you having to type anything or even move the mouse now if it's not an existing customer it will still pull up customer records and fill in the phone number and first and last name and then if you want to you can go ahead and save that as a new customer or just dis discard that information now in order to make this work you're going to, need to set up a few things in here regarding your modem uh, you're going to have to tell our computer where your modem is uh, our software where your modem is uh, installed on your computer uh, usually it's going to be COM1, COM2, 3 or 4 one of those COM serial ports and uh, right now it's not showing any on our computer because the current computer we're testing the software with doesn't exactly have a modem on it uh, then you will need to enter the AT command for enabling caller ID on your modem uh, that you will find in your technical manual of the modem or if you can't then you will need to contact the technical support for that modem uh, this is very important so that the caller ID feature of that modem is enabled by our software of course we have some suggestions in here as to what that AT command may be for your modem uh, these are just the most commonly used for most common brands of modems then uh, you would need to enter that modems AT command for disabling auto answer so that our software can actually tell your modem to disable its auto answer feature and not to answer the call because you don't want your modem to answer the call because we're not doing anything with answering the call in this software we just want to get the caller ID information and you still want to pick up the phone the receiver of the phone yourself then when you're done entering all this information in the screen you just click submit changes software is going to notify you that the info has been updated successfully and the software will just need to restart itself in order for the changes to take effect so as soon as you click OK in here the software will simply restart 